Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video, I will be showing you how I make a silicone Ahsoka headpiece. So first off, obviously you need some type of form. Here is mine. Um, it is an aluminum foil base, aluminum foil and masking tape. And then I covered it with expanding foam to kind of give it a bit more rigidity and to make it a bit more firm and to also help smooth out the foil. So I didn't have to do all of the smoothing and shaping with clay. I did a little bit with the expanding foam to try and help make this a little bit lighter. And then I covered it all in a sulfur-free, non-drying clay. So, and then I just took a lot of time and smoothed it out as best I could. Some places were a little hard to smooth out just because of how thin of a layer I have the clay on here. But yeah, and then smooth it out as best you can. Uh, this clay you can use heat on and you can use uh, some type of paint thinner to help smooth it out. If you are using paint thinner or a heat gun on this clay, make sure you are in a well ventilated area because it will release fumes that you do not want to be breathing in. So I do have my window open right there. So if you hear any weird noises or anything, it's noises from outside. So yeah. And then I took a fine point clay sculpting tool and then just drew in the lines for her blue markings. So that is the form. So now let's talk about materials. I use Smooth On Cycle Paint. It is a two part silicone paint. Um, so to tip the silicone, I use silk pigs. So they are just these little things of color that you just mix into your silicone. So with the cycle paint, you can add a lot of silk pigs to it. You can add a lot, so much pigment and really, really make that color opaque. So what the plan is, is to do two layers of blue. So do one that's a little like splotchy and just kind of dabbed on. So to give it that texture that she has and that kind of color variation that she has and then do one layer that's darker and fills in the whole stripe and then do a layer or two layers of white all over this entire thing to make sure that that white is opaque and everything and that the blue is backfilled so you won't be able to see through or anything and make sure that that color is really solid. So once I have the cycle paint on, I will then use Smooth On EcoFlex 20. It is a two-part silicone. It is a platinum cure silicone measuring cups. These are actually resin mixing cups. So, you can see the nice reflection from my ring light, but it does actually have measurements on the side, which is helpful. Popsicle sticks to mix it with. I have two different types of cheap disposable paintbrushes. These ones are actually acid flux brushes, and then these ones are just paintbrushes. These ones are a bit finer than the acid flux brushes, so these ones will be nice for doing edges on the blue marks or something and then these will be nice for just putting stuff on. I do have this little bottle. This is Smooth On Thyvex and it is a silicone thickener. The silicone itself is pretty liquidy so you can add a couple drops of this to thicken it up. So the cycle paint itself is pretty thick in the first place and if you find that's too thick for you to work with you can add some type of paint thinner to it. I use um, toluene I think that's how it's pronounced, but you can also use acetone or something similar. Just make sure to look at the directions that come with your silicone and your cycle paint to check to make sure what is compatible with them. And finally, I have this. It is a mesh fabric. It is a power mesh fabric, so it's not tool or something. It is more like the mesh that you find in athletic wear. And the reason I have this is because silicone can be pretty fragile itself and so I will be putting this in between layers of silicone to help strengthen it so that it helps prevent rips and tears from happening. Um, a drop cloth depending on where you're working. If you don't want to get silicone on the floor, make sure you are in a well ventilated area. I do have a window open right here. I do have a fan going behind the camera. I will turn on another fan that's down here. This one's a little louder so I don't have it on right now. Um, the silicone itself and the cycle paint itself, I find to me, doesn't have a very strong smell. But that doesn't mean they aren't releasing fumes or gases that you should not be breathing in. Silicone is a chemical reaction. 
So please, please, please make sure you are wearing some type of respirator or working in a well-ventilated area. You do not want to be breathing this stuff in in an enclosed area. If you prefer, you can wear rubber gloves. Make sure they are latex free gloves though because the latex can interfere with the silicone and cause cure inhibition which cure inhibition is just your silicone doesn't cure right and it usually causes it to remain sticky. So you can use latex free gloves if you would prefer. Um, and then other than that really the only thing you'll need is a pair of scissors. Uh, make sure you are wearing clothes that you don't care about because if you get silicone on your clothes, it is not coming out. And also if you have long hair, make sure that you tie up your hair so you don't get so you don't get silicone in your hair. So in case anyone is wondering, my um, there's my pink collection in the background. My stand is an old camera tripod with a lightsaber blade taped to it. So the technique I will be using for this is I will be making this inside out. So what that means is I will be starting with the cycle paint and doing the blue stripes first and then doing the white and then the silicone and mesh fabric and then I will finally take it off of this and flip it right side out. So that is why these lines at the top are uh, recessed. That is why they have more of trenches rather than a hill like hers are and that is because I will be making this inside out. So when I flip it they'll be right. The reason I am doing it this way is because I have made a few headpieces before and I found that the silicone that is against the clay is more likely to be smooth and it also gives the clay also gives the silicone a matte texture. Smooth on does create a product that you can add to the silicone to give it a matte texture but I find that the clay will give it a matte texture itself. And again, it is smoother than um, painting it on and leaving it right side out. Um, that also allows me to trim up the blue. If I get any drips or anything, I can trim up the blue before doing the white and not have to worry about putting holes in it or messing up the white, white or something or having to constantly monitor it and clean up any drips. I can just do the blue. If I have drips, I can go in with a pair of scissors or a knife and clean it up before I do the white. So let's get started with the light blue. I'm gonna go mix that up and be right back. So here it is. So it's a nice light gray blue. You can kind of see how thick the cycle paint is. Also, I have some lo-fi Star Wars playing in the background. So if you're wondering what that is. So I'm just gonna take my acid flux brush, which is the bigger one, and just start dabbing this on. Um, I'm going to be careful while doing this so as to not mess up the clay underneath. I don't want to leave any texture. But I do want to dab this on. I also don't want to fully cover because this is just supposed to be a texture and not the actual thing. Um, if I can, I am going to try and clean up the little bit I get between the lines or outside of the lines. Um, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to keep up with that, but yeah. So I will, I will see you guys when I am done with this. All right, so that's done. Um, you can kind of see it's dripping a little bit. It's not quite staying where I want it to. And I still have quite a bit left. So what I'm going to do is add a bit more weight into this, make it a little lighter and then add some thickener to this and put some more on. So I will see you guys in a little bit. All right, so that is all on. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try and wipe up some of these drips so I have a little less to clean up. And then as this is curing, I'm gonna keep dabbing at it to try and give a bit more texture and not really texture, but variation in the thickness of this so I get a little bit more color variation. So yeah, um, I'm gonna get probably some paper towels or toilet paper or something and try and wipe up some of these drips. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just taking small little pieces of toilet paper and just carefully dabbing away some of this. Trying to work fast because this is curing, but just to give it a bit more texture and to kind of help get rid of some of the brush strokes and any places where it's solid. 
Um, this is where marking those lines in the clay first comes in handy. So then it's basically just a color in the lines type situation. All right, so I got the blue all done and I've just gone in with a little bit of toilet paper and cleaned up the edges so I have a little bit less cleaning to do later. Uh, still a couple little pieces I need to clean up. But yeah, that, that'll do it for that layer. Um, I went in pretty thick with this layer to make sure that this blue was pretty opaque. So now I'm going to let this cure and then I'm going to do a layer white. Alright, so I got my white cycle paint mixed up. So now I'm just gonna put it on this entire thing. I am going to be careful around the edges of the blue just to make sure I don't peel it up at all and I actually am going to go in between the blue first just in case I don't have enough. Alright, I will keep working on this and check back in when I'm done. Alright, so I have most of it done. I just really need to get the inside of the back lid here, but I ran out. But as you can tell, I stayed off of the blue and really just went along the edges. So yeah, I'm going to mix up a little bit more cycle paint and then finish up putting the white. So I have all of my white paint on. Um, as you can see, I still did not go over the blue. I did that just because of the amount of material I have. Um, I still have a little bit of cycle paint left, but I don't want to use all of it if I don't have to. So I know that this blue is pretty opaque, so I don't have to worry about putting the white on the back of it to kind of backfill it or something. So I just did a layer of white over where the blue wasn't. So now that is going to cure. Um, a couple of things about the cycle paint. So I did use two units of cycle paint. So I used two of the trial size units, which is four ounces each. So I used a total of about 16 ounces of cycle paint for this entire thing. That's really just because I used the thickener in it. So I had to use a bit more paint than if you hadn't added the thickener or if you had added a thinner instead, which you can do. Uh, just be aware that if you do that, you are going to have to deal with a lot more drips than I had. But I can tell you from experience that if you thin down your cycle paint, you can get away with one trial unit, which is eight ounces, four ounces of both A and B. Uh, for my Siege of Mandalore, my season seven Ahsoka headpiece, I did use only one trial unit. It, it was pretty close. Um, it got pretty close, but I did thin down every single layer that I did. So all of the layers were pretty thin and not really opaque. So you can actually kind of see through the layers on that headpiece. And I decided for this one, I wanted to try and make the layers a bit more opaque than I did on that one. So obviously I would need more paint. Oh, so I'm going to let this cure. And then the next step is to put a layer of Ecoflex 20 silicone down. And that layer I am going to tint white. Just kind of help give the white paint a bit more to it. Just so it's a bit more opaque. Um, the silicone doesn't take color as well as the cycle paint does so the silicone will always be kind of translucent or kind of milky compared to the cycle paint where the cycle paint you can get like a true clear opaque color so that is something to be aware of so i'm going to let this cure and then come in with the silicone
the white is all cured. Uh, I did leave it overnight just because I did the white at like midnight. <laughs> so I left it overnight so it is fully cured. So now we are going to do a layer of silicone. All right, so here it is all mixed up. So you can definitely see that it's a bit more liquidy than the paint was. So I will definitely be adding thickener to this. So I'm going to go do that and then get started. All right, so I got a thickener added to it. So now I'm just going to paint this on and just put it all over. Um, it is a little hard to see the difference between the white paint and the white silicone, but just do your best. All right, so I have that layer of silicone all over it. So before this cures, I'm going to take some of that mesh fabric that I cut up into strips. I have two different sizes. So I've got a thicker one and then a thinner one. And I'm just going to stick this on and use that silicone to hold it in place. All right, hey guys. So first off, sorry if the video or sound quality changes. I had to switch cameras because the battery in my other one died and I could not find the charger. So I had to switch cameras. So moving on. <laughs> um, so before my camera died, I was putting the fabric on here and, and when I put the fabric on, I usually will do uh, little strips like this instead of trying to cover the entire thing with, with one big piece of fabric. I find that using little pieces like this is easier. It helps you get around the curves easier and get into the little small places or around the tips a lot easier. So I did that right after I finished the first layer so that it would stick to that first layer. So I didn't have to worry about trying to fight the fabric and try to get it to stick while I'm putting silicone on. So I went ahead and just stuck it on that first layer of silicone before it cured. I am going to go ahead and mix up some more silicone and do the second layer to make sure that this fabric is fully covered and embedded in the silicone so it doesn't peel off or anything. So here we go. I got quite a bit mixed up. I did add a little bit of thickener to this. Um, not as much as I did previously because I do want this to be able to seep in between the, uh, the fabric and really soak in there and make sure that it reaches the layer of silicone underneath. So this is a bit more liquidy. And I did tint it white. Um, you don't have to. I just chose to do that to try and make it a little bit easier to see versus the clear. Now I'm just going to get started here. And I find that the best way to do this is to kind of dab it on versus actually brushing it on just because of all these edges. Um, brush from the inside of the fabric to the outer edge just to kind of help smooth it down. And just take your time. Dealing with the fabric is probably the messiest part of this just because you do kind of have to get your fingers a little a little sticky with the silicone if you have to move the fabric around or even just sticking the fabric onto the silicone. Alright, so I am out of silicone. I used up all the silicone I had mixed. I am going to mix some more up right now and continue putting it on and not wait for this to cure. If you run out of silicone or paint while you are working, you can very easily just mix up more and keep going or you can wait for it to cure and then do another layer. Uh, it's really up to you what you choose to do and it really depends on your time, how much time you have to work on it and how fast you want to get it done. I'm going to put an extra layer of fabric and silicone around the hairline here just because I know that that's a high stress area. So that being a high stress area is where it's most likely going to rip. So I'm just going to put some extra strips right there. Make sure that your edges of your fabric are overlapping so you don't have any gaps. 
Alright, so now I'm just going to go over all of this with what's left of my silicone. Alright, so checking in on this, feels like everything is cured. Um, I'm not feeling any like super stickiness. So, I'm looking at it, doesn't look like I missed anything, so that's good. So now comes the really nerve wracking part, pulling this off. This is where that mesh fabric is going to come in handy because it's going to help prevent any rips when you're stretching this off of the mold. Um, I also made these front Leku detachable. They come off at approximately here. So I will be able to take those off. So hopefully that'll help a little bit. So yeah, I'm just gonna... The best way to start is to just go around all of your edges and just start peeling it making sure that it's going to want to peel off there we go and then just slowly and carefully I like to try and work my hand in there to try and help unstick as much of it as I can before I start peeling it and then just keep carefully working so I'm gonna do that and be right back here she is all taken off and so far she looks amazing. I did find one little spot. There's one little spot right here I do have to touch up because for whatever reason the cycle paint formed a bubble. So there's no paint right there but there is silicone and fabric so it's fine. A close up of the color. I am pretty happy with how it came out. Um, there are a couple spots I didn't quite get all of the blue off of, but that's okay. So here is my mold. Um, it actually isn't too bad. The Leku, like I said, I did make these detachable. So very happy with how they came off. They were just hot glued on and then secured with the clay around it. So real quick, some notes about the clay. My clay tends to feel a little drier or kind of get dried out after having the silicone put on top of it, but I do find that just hitting it with a heat gun will um, bring back its, will help make it not feel so dried out. The clay I know for a fact is perfectly fine. I'm going to put some polyfill in this and see how it looks stuffed up. And then once I have that stuffed, I'm going to trim the hairline so that it will sit right and clean a little bit of this messiness up. So there is a little bit of messiness right there that I do need to clean up. All right, so here she is all stuffed. She still is very flexible. So here's the back. Um, I haven't looked at the back yet because it's a little hard to look at the back. Um, but yeah, there's is very comfortable. Um, I do have a little bit too much stuffing in here, I think, but she is sitting very nicely. As you can tell, she's not wanting to come off or anything, and I don't have anything holding this on. That is just how it's naturally sitting on my head. So yeah, there's, that is what she looks like. So as you can see, these forehead ridges that she has came out how I wanted them to. So I am very, very happy with how this came out. So here's a little closer look. Oh, she sits very nicely. Very, very comfortable. I haven't made her cold teeth yet, so I do have my Season 7 headband that I can demonstrate real quick. So it just has... This is just craft foam. It is actually two layers of craft foam, and this second layer has holes in it for the magnets, and they are just super glued in. And I just have six of them like that. So let me go ahead and pop this on so you can see how it looks. 
all magneted on and the nice thing is with the magnets it's adjustable and you can also interchange it so like right here it's gapping a little so I can just move the magnet down a little bit and it's gapping a little less now and the magnets hold very securely I have not had a chance to try them out at a convention because of everything that's been going on but I did wear it to a beach photo shoot and did not have a single problem with the magnets. What I'm probably going to do is trim the hairline back about an inch or so and just kind of taper it down to here just so that this will sit a little farther up on my head and that may help with the back a little bit. Um, I can also pull some of the stuffing out so that it sits a bit better on my head. But yeah, so that, that's it. So final thoughts, tips, and everything. So this one is the culmination of four different headpieces before it, as well as talking to several other different cosplayers and prop makers and seeing what they did for their headpieces or what they did for making a mold, working with clay and silicone. So definitely, if you have questions or concerns, reach out to people. I know that people are more than willing to help, more than willing to answer any questions. If you have any questions for me, you can leave them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them. Or you can also message me on Instagram. I am under the same name, Commander Pop-Tart. It's actually Commander underscore Pop-Tart. I am more than happy to answer any questions that you have. I am more than willing to help you and give you any tips and advice that I can offer. Um, so some final, final wrap ups and final thoughts on this. Uh, I absolutely love the way it moves. I love how comfortable it is and I love how lightweight it still is. It is a little bit heavier than a foam headpiece or a fabric and stuffed headpiece would be but it definitely has a lot more movement because I can do this and this isn't even glued onto my head and it's staying in place perfectly fine. Um, uh, some other things, if you do make a silicone headpiece and you're noticing that you don't quite have as much movement as you would like, you can try taking out some of the stuffing because I noticed on my season 7 headpiece that the parts of the Leku that were stuffed a little bit more had a little bit less flexibility and a little bit less movement. So if you're noticing that your Leku is feeling a little stiff, you can try taking out some of the stuffing and see if that helps. It could also just be um, what type of silicone you used, how hard it was. See, I used pretty flexible silicone, but I did a very thick layer of paint. So that paint can inhibit a little bit of that flexibility. And also these ones are a little bit thicker and a little bit shorter than Season 7 Leku, so they don't have as much movement in the first place just because they're a little shorter. So um, if I were to change anything on this, I probably would change the amount of thickener, the amount of 5x I added to the paint, especially the white part of it and doing the blue backing, uh, the dark blue part. I think I may have added a little bit too much thickener to it, so those parts ended up coming out really, really thick and they were kind of hard to spread out and get an even coat. There are some parts on this where you can kind of see that's a little streaky and that's just because of how thick it was so it wasn't spreading as smoothly as I would have liked. Um, other than that, I don't think I would really change anything about this. I think only the, the other biggest thing I would change is maybe change the shape of the back leg goose so it sits a bit better but that is something that would go back to the mold and not this so I would maybe put a little bit more room right here or bump this out a little bit more just so it had a little bit more space to sit but I mean even despite that it is still very comfortable uh, I'm not having any problems moving so a couple of things I thought of after I took my headpiece off. Um, it can be a little warm to wear because it's a lot of stuffing and silicone doesn't breathe. So your head can get a little sweaty. Uh, it can make your entire body hot just because your head is hot. So that is also something to be aware of. The silicone does not breathe in any way and you do have a lot of padding. and It's basically becoming insulation on your head. Um, 
On the plus side though, that stuffing does kind of act like earmuffs, so it helps block out some noise. Uh, it's really nice at a convention because if you have anxiety or get overwhelmed easily, it kind of helps block things out so that you aren't overwhelmed, but it can be a little hard to hear. I have accidentally ignored people just because I truly could not hear them calling my name. So if you are one of those people that tried to call to me at a convention or something, I truly am sorry. I truly did not hear you because it does muffle everything. But I find it kind of nice because it helps block out some of that extra sound that can get a little overwhelming. Um, another thing, this little point right here, right with the front and back like you meet, can be a little messy and a little tricky to do just because of flipping it inside out and how small that is. So this point right here you definitely need to be careful and take your time on. Otherwise it can get a little messy and a little weird. So to glue it on, I use Smooth On Skin Tight. It is a skin to silicone safe glue. And you can also buy that on Amazon. And you just mix up a little bit, put it on either the silicone or on your skin. Make sure your skin is clean and oil and sweat free. And then you just stick it on and hold it for five minutes. And then you're good to go. I will also try and link websites to all of the products I used. Um, pretty much everything I used except for maybe the fabric you can get on Amazon. Again, if you have any questions or comments, anything, please feel free to leave a comment. I will do my best to answer it. And if you use this tutorial, if this helped you at all, please let me know if you make your own and post on social media, please tag me. I would love to see it. I absolutely love seeing everyone's work. And yeah, I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.